is AEW Unrestricted. Aubrey Edwards here with my close personal friend, Tony Schiavone, who's looking hey, quite wonderful today. You're, uh, you've are you been awake for a couple hours. you got that East Coast uh, glow yes. to you. I've been awake for uh, many hours. Thank you for asking. I have <laughs> two energy drinks in me right now. And I've ignored, my purple monster? I've ignored my <laughs> wife all morning, and I've moisturized my face. There so you go. So I feel great. Man, this is uh, it's the Tony Hufani routine, everyone. Two monsters and some moisturizer on your face. Anyway, uh, we're here today to talk to a wonderful guest. Before we get started, AEW Casino, totally a sponsor of AEW Unrestricted. Go to the App Store and the Google Play Store. Download it now. Uh, steal all of Alex's Marvez poker chips because he's playing the game constantly. Yeah. Now let's get to the guest, which is uh, my wonderful friend, uh, Ty Conti. Hello, girl. How are you? Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy. A little bit nervous as always when I need to talk because of my English, but you already know. <laughs> Your English is great. And I've told you time and time again, like, please stop apologizing. You're awesome. Like, don't worry about it. Thanks. All right. So we're going to start a little differently just because I know like your background is very different than everyone else's. But you have a black belt in judo and a blue belt in Brazilian jiu jitsu. And you participated in the trials for the 2016 Brazilian Olympic team. And I kind of want to know like how all of that happens. Like how do you decide I'm going to try out for the Olympics? (laughs) Oh, yeah. So it's like I start in gymnastics, to be honest. And then it was just for a week because that was not my thing. You know, I'm not flexible at all. It was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, don't like that. Get me out of here, please. So they had judo, like kind of in front of like in the same building. And I was like, oh, I want to try this. And that was really like little. I was like seven years old. And of course, my mom didn't agree with it. But then my stepdad, he was like, yup, let's try it. So my stepdad, he was like, uh, bring me to judo like and my mom didn't know and I felt in love and then at some point my mom was like you know what that's her thing I guess you know and then I started judo and then when that was like if I'm not wrong that was like 2011 I got like my first um really important competition to be part of the Brazilian team and then that's when I start really traveling around the world like I went to Germany and Portugal to represent Brazil, and I was super young. And then I was like, well, I guess I'm an athlete. That's my life. That's what I want to do. So that's how everything started. And then judo was pretty much like my life, everything. That was my job, my dream. And then I was working hard for years and years. And then 2016, there was like the um, uh, Olympic Games in Brazil, in Rio, where I where I'm from and I was like damn it you know and I was working hard but I knew that was something like super hard to get into it and that was like because of the age and ranking and everything I knew that was not my time yet I was kind of focused for like the next one four years after 2016 but then I was getting good and then opportunity were coming I was winning matches and winning competitions and then when the the list for the tryout came because it's like a big thing everybody's like waiting for the list you know to see who is in who is not my name showed up because my rank my ranking was really good and I was like oh my damn god you know <laughs> I didn't expect it. I was working hard, but I didn't expect it. And then I was like, okay, I guess, I guess I have an opportunity (laughs) and I'm going to go for it. Uh, But then I lost and that was like devastating for me. Right. Actually, the girl that won the uh, she's from Rio, too. That's the funniest part. And then she won uh, to represent Brazil. And she was an um, Olympic champ. So, you know, I don't feel that bad. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to lose to anybody, lose right? to the person that's right? the Olympic champion. Yes. So. so that was super nice. And then that's when, like, the opportunity to uh, to come to pro wrestling showed up in my life. I was like... You may- uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ty. Uh, by the way, yeah. we're talking to Ty Conti. You made your AEW debut in 2020 in the Women's Tag Team Cup Tournament. How did you become part of that tournament and who contacted you about coming out? Oh, okay. So uh, 
I was, you know, like not working anymore. And I was like, do I want to be in wrestling? So I was kind of like questioning myself and I was like, no, I love wrestling. That's what I want. I'm going to like keep trying. And then um, Lucha Soros was the one that contacted me. And then he tagged uh, Kenny in one of my videos in tw- uh, on my Twitter. Mm-hmm. And then he sent my message like, hey, I hope everything's gonna, you know, everything's good and blah, blah, blah. And mind you, I didn't know Luchasaurus. We never talked before. And the, and then I guess uh, Kenny asked for my number and Luchasaurus like, hey, Kenny saw your video, he wants your number. So he contacted me uh, to go to, to this, uh, to be honest, that was like a different match that they had in mind that mm-hmm. didn't work out. And then after that, it was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go there and see like, you know, how I like it and everything to see if they like me. And then when I got there for the first time, I was super nervous because I didn't know like anyone. And Brandy, Cody, Tony, everyone was so like friendly. That I was like, oh my God, I really like here. It's so different. Like the first five minutes that I got there, I was like, holy crap, it's totally different from, you know, my previous job. So I really liked it. And then I stayed there for the whole day. And then the end of the day, Tony and Brandy and Cody talked to me about the opportunity to go for the tag tournament. And I was like, yep, let's do it. I talk so, a lot, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's, it's, a, it's a podcast about you. It's, it makes it a lot easier on us. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things I particularly love about the tournament, and I think everyone has kind of seen this uh, both on TV and social media, is it was a tag tournament and you got paired with Anna J. Mm -hmm. who now you two are basically like inseparable um (laughs) how did like did you have any say in how who you got tied with and just like how did that all work out well i had no idea and then i was sitting on the stands by myself just looking around and then anna popped up like next to me like oh my god like you're you're beautiful i really like your job and then we start talking i was like yeah you too you know and then that's how it started. Like we started talking about life, work and everything. And she stayed with me for the whole day to like super late midnight or whatever. And that's when I had the the meeting, the conversation with Tony and Brandon and everyone. And then they told me like, oh, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be a team with energy. I'm like, wait, what? It's like, yes. And I'm like, hell yeah. So I text her because we changed numbers. Like oh my God, guess what? We're going to be a team. And then we start coming up with ideas and everything. So that was super natural. We didn't know. It just happened. Uh, You uh, were uh, signed to a contract, uh, what, about uh, right after the tournament, I guess maybe a few weeks after the tournament. Uh, And what did that mean to be signed to a contract for AEW? Oh my God. I was really, I was not expecting like, that was super fast. And I was right. like, yes, I will, you know, I will keep coming and let's see if we like each other because that was the conversation. Because since I was not real happy in my previous job, I was like, you know, I don't know if I want to sign a contract for a long year, like long term contract to be unhappy again. So we kind of feel each other. And then when they offered me, I was like, oh, you know what? I'm pretty sure that I'm happy here. So I'm going to sign it. And then I remember my first match after they announced that I got signed. I was so emotional. Let me tell you, I cry a lot. You and cried in the in the tunnel. Yes, I, I couldn't. It was just so touching. I couldn't handle myself because that was like a new beginning for me. You know what I mean? I was like, damn, a couple months ago, I thought that like my career in wrestling was over. And here I am in a big platform, like a great platform in a place that I'm happy. I'm actually happy. I can be myself. I don't feel I'm judged. You know, like, so that was everything together. And when I was like doing my entrance, I was like, damn, I forgot that I had to be like Ty Conti. I was Ty Nara in that moment. I was like, damn, my whole, my, my emotions, my feelings, I'm so damn grateful. And that's how I feel in AW. Every time I got to go there, it's like, damn, I got to go to work. Yes, let's go. Let's do it. You know? I don't know if I ever told you this story or not, but I remember when Kenny told me, hey, we're thinking about bringing in Ty. And I think you and I had had an interaction at the previous place when I was trying out that was kind of like, 
man, this girl's kind of a bitch. Like, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Um, and we we've talked about it further since then. But uh, I told Kenny, I'm like, dude, I don't know. She's she might not be good for the locker room. And that after that first day you were around, I texted him and said, we need her. <laughs> like she's good energy, she's solid worker, like she will be a great addition to our team. So I'm really glad that I got to know you a little bit more in our setting because I feel like it's a good place for people to be themselves and kind of demonstrate like who they really are as people, right? You're not walking around on eggshells, you you get to be you. So thank you yeah. for being you. No, thank you. Yeah, it's like, honestly, I kind of agreed, like, I was not happy in my previous job, so I was not really being by myself. There was a lot of stress, so that was super hard. And then that's when I was like, you know what? That's not me. I got to I gotta be out of here. I bec- became a person that I, I'm not, you know? So I feel like now I have a better relationship with everybody. I can be myself, you know? So, yeah, I, I agree with you, probably. And, you know, my face doesn't help. Because I have a serious face. And then when you look at me, it's like, damn, that bit sucks. <laughs> I don't even know if I can I say that here. I'm sorry. Yes, you can. You oh, can say totally. It. Yeah. I swear all the time. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. And then, but that's pretty much my face. So, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so recently, back on the 20th of April, you had a world title shot against Hikado Shida. Uh, talk about working against her. Ooh. Best match of my life, most important match of, like, match of my career. So damn happy to be able to work with Shira. Like, since day one, she was super nice. And, you know, like, we are kind of, like, both, like, English is not our first language. So we're kind of like, oh, hi, hi. But then we got to know each other a little bit better. And then we were able to work as a tag team. And then... We just felt like we had a chemistry, you know, like our uh, our background is kind of like similar, even like our style in the ring. I feel it's pretty similar, like strikes and then submissions, like, you know, and she has like a judo background a little bit. So it was super fun to be able to work with someone that like, you know, like had the kind of same style as me. I was super happy to work with her. And then when it came to our match, it was like, oh, my God, that's going to be like the best match of my life. And I was damn right, you know, because like <laughs> the strikes, I still I still bruise. Like, I don't know if you guys can see it. I still oh have some bruise. That. It's been like more than a week already. Like, that's the style I like because I love Japanese style, like matches, you know, like strong style. That's more me. I love like lucha style and then you know, American for us, but I, I I prefer to do it like the strong style, like from Japan. That's what I like. And I feel like with Shira, I was able to show that a little bit more. Like, And then that's why I feel like we had a good chemistry and a good match. Uh, for people that may not have noticed, uh, I got to ref that match. And right as soon as it was done and Shida, I think it, it Shida the, the knee or the spinning kick thing and then did the like crawled over pinned and I think the first thing I did was roll up to you and I'm like I am so fucking proud of you right now and then I went and got the title and gave it to Sheeta it was great yeah Um, yes yeah it's worked it's really really nice to work with you because you're always motivating us in the ring so I do appreciate you I'm always telling you like hey you got this it's fucking great just breathe breathe you got this girl you're killing it All right. this is AEW Unrestricted Aubrey and Tony here with the wonderful Ty Conti Tony and Aubrey here on AEW Unrestricted with the wonderful Ty Conti, who we will never say, oh, that bitch sucks to her. <laughs> never, again. She, never, never again. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> no, <'cause> she, she, <laughs> because she doesn't. She's great. She's wonderful. <laughs> and she proved that back on the 20th in that match against Hikaru Shida, which, as you may have been listening, she said was the greatest match of her life, which obviously she has a lot more to go. But before we go in uh, to COVID, I want to talk about COVID and how it changed your life. I want to talk a little bit about Brody Jr., negative one. He comes out with you a lot. He means a lot to us as a company, and I know he means a lot to you as well. Oh, it's always hard to talk about him. I got emotional. Sure. Like, I, I mentioned a couple times before, like, I never had um, any connection with Brody before. Uh, and then after what happened, and I saw that kid, 
I don't know, we just clicked, right. you know, we just connect. And I trying to, to, you know, to figure it out why. And then even like with my therapy, because I do therapy, I need it. I struggle a lot with mental health. So I do Good. that. And the, and I'm not ashamed to say it. So I was telling you her and be. I was like, I don't know what it is, but I have such a connection with that kid that I can't explain. And she was like, yeah, I can be wrong, but I feel like you don't want him to feel the pain that you felt in your past when you were a kid because I didn't have any like um, contact with my daddy and I know that hurt me. Right. You know, my dad is still alive, but we don't have any con contact. So sure. I don't know. She was like, it may can be. It. And then in my mind, it's like I have a little sister that she's adopted and she's the same age as him. So and I miss her every single day. And I was like, I don't know if it's because like I see my sister in him. I don't know. I just know I love that kid and I can feel he loves me back. You know, it's it's something that's it's natural and I can feel it, it's true. Our connection is like, it's not a thing for wrestling. It's just like, I love him. I remember, uh, I think we were preparing for one of your matches on dark and little Brody's just kind of hanging out by the step and repeat. And you're like, dude, are you, are you going to be ready for my match? He's like, what? It's happening. And he like grabs his boots and starts running away. I'm like, where are you going? He goes, I have to go to medical. I need my wrist taped. Like he takes <laughs> it very seriously. <laughs> yes, yes, really. And then my match against Ali, I was super nervous. And he was the one like, you got to breathe. My mom told me that when I'm nervous that you're going to be, let's breathe together. You know, it's like, damn, he's a kid. You know, he's the one helping me. Yeah. In my mind, I'm like, you know, I, I want to help him. I, I want to be around and then, no, he's the one helping me. So it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, that's a great story. Now, now Ty, uh, you were impacted by COVID-19, but it ultimately uh, may have been for the better. Uh, it was a game changer for many, but it really impacted your life. Uh, talk about your release from uh, WWE in April of 2020. So that was like a long story. That, okay, we've got you know, time. <laughs> yeah so you know to make it better and quick it's pretty much like i was asking for my release okay for a couple months i was right. not happy had i was so like unhappy there that i didn't have any plans i was just like i want to get out of here i'm not happy and those i i never thought about like oh what i'm gonna do if they give me my release i never thought about it i was like i just need to be done with them right and then of course they did they said no a couple of times we were having like a bunch of meetings and then you know trying to talk with my previous boss and then with the officer try to figure it out things and i was like nope i'm just done please let me go so the last one they told me like no you're not going and then they mentioned aw i remember like they asked me like they told me like no you're not going gonna go to AW like we put a, a a lot of money on you you a star blah 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 then now you gotta go there I'm like oh yes I you guys don't use me here so yeah I gotta go somewhere but it's not there I know nobody there I told them like I have no plans to go to AW and then I had no plans because I had no contacts at all so we the end of the day like. We figured it out that they said no, and I still had like two years in my contract. And I was like, well, what I'm going to do? I got to be here, right? So they told him like, okay, you can be at home. We're going to pay you. You can be at home. I'm like, no, because then I know everybody's going to forget about me, and then I would not be able to work, you know? And I was like, no, it's okay. I'm going to make it like two more years. I'm going to keep working. I have no choice, right? <laughs> And then we decided to keep working and then every, everything was good. We got like in a good terms and then something had to change because I was not, not happy with training schedule or whatever. And then I was back to work normally out of nowhere. They called me because of, I mean, not out of nowhere. Everybody knew what, what was going on because of COVID, but I was not expecting the call since we were okay. Right. So they told me like, yeah, uh, we are finally letting you go. Not in a, you know, really good, um, 
how to explain that without being too mean. Like they're not too nice. No, they're not. We get <laughs> it. Not. We understand. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm so grateful for for them because honestly, they changed my life. You know, right. I came to US. They bet on me, and then they helped me a lot. They really changed my life, and I'm grateful for it. But then the last year, like I was like, oh, not happy. I gotta go. Right. So that was pre- like super hard. That was one of the worst days of my life, to be honest. And then I was lost, sad, upset, and everything. I was like, damn, what am I gonna do now? And then it turns out that was like the best thing that ever happened to me because after this, I had no job and a, I bought a house. And I bought, the, yes. <laughs> How did they do that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I was so like, after, you know, a couple of weeks, I was like, damn, I'm happy. That's what I want, you know? And then I was figuring out my life. And then like, you know, like, oh, what I can do with the money that I saved and blah, 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 blah. And I came from like a really poor, like neighborhood. Like my family was really poor. So like having a house, have a house and a car was something that was super like, not, and that was not a thing for me to be honest you know you're living like a I queen had, yeah i had that dreams but that was so far from me that when i did it i was like damn i have no job i'm happy i just bought a house and i bought the car that i always wanted it was like what a good life you know and then after this i got my contract and then i was like oh my god i, I have nothing to complain i live with good a good life you know i'm just so grateful it's uh it's always pretty awesome i love just hearing these stories of people who don't have something that makes them happy every day and then joining our family and immediately it's just like oh this is the greatest like why Mm -hmm. should you even complain it's one of those like when we're doing AEW dark until 2 a.m and people are like oh this is annoying i'm like dude like this is fun like <laughs> you get paid like, two to days be we get two days out of like every like two weeks right <laughs> we get to really? be on tv how many people are actually wrestling in the world like yeah this is great yeah um, you're pretty you much like you get paid to have fun right pretty much you get to hang out with nine-year-olds who uh who boss you around <laughs> with a kendo stick it's awesome so you had mentioned in our last segment that you were doing the the judo and trying out for the Olympics and all of these things. And then you had just gotten contacted by WWE. Like, was there any sort of, uh, like, what was the transition like? Was it just a, okay, I'm going to be a wrestler now? Or was wrestling always a part of your life? Are you ready for this? <laughs> yes, yes okay. we are. Here it is. I had no idea. I never, ever watched wrestling before. Oh. Never had no idea what wrestling was before. Wrestling was not, it's not like a big thing in Brazil, like here in the US. So right. never heard about it. Not gonna lie, yes. So when they contact me, that was like a uh, true friend, right? And then he was like, hey, this opportunity, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hell no, I'm not getting out of my country to go to a different country that do something that I don't even know what it is. It may be prostitution. I'm not kidding. <laughs> that Good was, girl. <laughs> Always be skeptical. <laughs> that was my mind. I'm like, hell no, it's traffic. I'm not, hell no, I'm not getting out of my, my country. No way. No way I'm doing this. And then he was like, no, let's, you know, let's look in internet or whatever. And then I was like, okay, let's, let's see what it is. And then I was looking at it. I was like, oh, it's, it looks fun, you know, but mind you, I had no idea. And then I was like, oh, is that true? Like, is that, is that fake? You know, I had no clue. And then, um, I contact, uh, not a friend. Because uh, Adrian Jowd, he was working for WWE at that time. And I knew him from competitions because he was an athlete before. And I was like, well, I kind of know him. He's not going to lie to me. His family is well-respected in Brazil. I'm going to contact him and see, like, what it is. And he was like, hey, it's a great opportunity and blah, blah, blah. You should try, you know. And I was like, okay, let's try it. And then I... I asked to come for a tryout. And then in my first day of my tryout, they're like, hey, you're signed. I'm like, well, we still have two days. He's like, yeah, you're going to do it, but you're signed. I'm like, okay. 
in my mind when i got in the tryout i was like it's a competition i saw a bunch of like girls there was like it's a competition i don't know what i'm gonna win but i'm gonna win that was my mindset back then. I was like, I'm going to win. I just want to be the best around here because it's a competition. And then I guess it worked. <laughs> but yeah, I never, never watched wrestling before. Wow. That's, uh, that, that, that is a great story. It really is because there's a lot in our business who grew up watching it, loving it. But you seem to have taken to it very, very well without even knowing what it was. So that's a great story. I want to ask you. You know, you mentioned we we also agreed that there are a lot of we think maybe wrong that at WWE, I say there's a lot of people that are not nice there. But if you look back on your experience there and I know you were in the May uh, Young Classic, you work for NXT. I think you were they had you at WrestleMania at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what do you think you learned from all that? What what did what did you learn from your time there? If you learned anything? Honestly, I learned a lot. First of all, I learned that I need uh, to speak up when I'm not happy because I was holding like, not in a bad way, like in a nice way, right? I was holding for so long and I was accepting everything that people told me that hurt me and everything that I never said. And then when I was starting saying, that's when things was ugly there. Because when you speak up there, that's when like people are like, oh, why are you doing this? You should be quiet. You know, so and then I learned a lot about the business, like how to be respectful, like a lot of people there was like really important to me, like to help me grow a lot. Like um, I remember um, people were saying like, hey, you just got here. Uh, so he has 10 years of experience. You get you get out of the chair and give him the chair. You know, and that's right. how I learned. And then guess what? I was happy to do it because in judo, it's the same thing. It's respect. And then we got to respect people who has more experience than us. And I was like, you know what? I got to prove my worth here. And that's what I'm going to do. That was hard because, you know, a couple people were like disrespectful, which is different, you know, but I learned a lot and then I learned how to love and respect the business. I feel that's the most important thing for me that I learned there. Uh, I do love and I do respect wrestling a lot. Very good answer. You'd mentioned you still have your family down in Brazil. How was it? Um, how was it leaving them behind and how often do you get to get to visit them again? Maybe out of, out of a COVID era since things are a little different now. Yeah, I mean, that's the worst part, to be honest. Like, my family never came here to visit me because, like, my sister is adopted. And then the whole documentation, it takes a while in Brazil. And then my mom didn't want to come and leave her behind with, like, a family or whatever. So nobody ever came here. I was the one going to Brazil, like, once a year because my schedule was super, like, hard. I didn't have any time to go. And then... Now it's been like two years since I saw them the last time. Um, I remember uh, in the airport uh, when I was moving here to US, I had no idea when I would see them again. And that was a day that I don't want like, you know, like go back <laughs> because that sure. was super hard, like super hard. I'm like, Tam, I'm leaving my family behind. I don't even know when I'm going to see them again. Like hugging my sister and my mom, like my brother. And I was super, super, super hard. That was the like worst thing ever to do. But then I feel like I'm a, a great, like a big believer in God. And then he put it someone in that plan to help me. That was, um, my English teacher's mom in the same plane as me to come to us in the same day, like crazy, crazy. Right. So she was helping me. And mind you, I didn't speak any English. I had classes for like six months in Brazil to come here, but shh, there was nothing, you know. So everything was super hard. But then my family always, always supported me because I left home when I was 15 because of judo. I was like, I'm going to do my thing, you know, I'm going to become like an athlete, a successful person. I always had in the back of my mind, like, I'm going to make money. I'm going to help my family and we're going to get out of this situation. 
So my mom is kind of used to it. I'm never ho- I was never home for birthdays or Christmas or whatever. I was all- always working, like traveling around. So we kind of like knew a little bit, but I always came back, you know. And at that time, I was like, yep, I'm not coming back anymore. <laughs> that was hard, but they understood. And then every time like I have uh, something like, you know, good going on, they're super excited and bad, they're there for me. So like, I remember you mentioned WrestleMania when I knew that I was like, about you being the, you know, like in WrestleMania, I freaked out. And I was like, mom, you don't, I don't even know how to explain what WrestleMania is for you. Right. So, because she doesn't, she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand. Right. right. And then they were just like, oh, okay. I guess I gotta be happy for you. I'm like, yes, please. And I'm crying <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it, that was like bad, but good. You know, I'm able sure. to help them. So yeah. I'm that's grateful. great. Yeah, that's great. We're talking with Ty Conti. Coming up next, we got fan questions from uh, Twitter. Oh, yeah. This is AEW Unrestricted. Aubrey Edwards and Tony Schiavone here with the wonderful Ty Conti. We've got a number of fan questions from Twitter. Uh, so let's just start going down the list. Uh, Gregory Harmon on Twitter says, I love how much emotion you show. One of the best best expressive faces in all of wrestling. How amazing was it walking out to the first match after being signed? And it looked like it meant the world to you. I know you touched on this a little bit, but. Yeah, so everybody talks about my face expressions. And then it's crazy because I feel I can't lie. Even like, you know, like, you know me, Aubrey. When I'm the backstage, you know if I'm sad, if I'm upset, if I'm stressed, because my face 100%. tells you. <laughs> so it's it's natural thing for me and then i mentioned a little bit about the match that was just like um you know like a new beginning i uh i was thinking about everything that i went through all the hard moments all like all the bad comments that i heard from my previous job like some people saying that like you're never gonna make outside here so that was like motivation motivation and then like everything together was like damn I guess I'm I'm here and I'm doing it, you know, and I'm gonna keep proving myself. I know I have like a long way to go. I'm just too new in this business and I know that. I hate when people like think that, oh, she thinks she's too much. No, I, I know, I know I'm like four years in this job. Four years is nothing, I'm a baby. You know, I have a long way to go and I'm gonna do it. I, I don't care, you know, like I'm gonna work, I'm gonna keep working. So that moment was like, just all their emotions together. <laughs> uh, Jackie Rodriguez on Twitter, and I think we kind of touched on this as well, but I- expand on it if you will. Oh, I got this new chair. Sorry. <laughs> and new chair is trying to kill you, man. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. It's a uh, Captain America <laughs> chair, and it's trying to throw something at me. So anyway, was there ever a moment, Ty, when you felt like giving up on your dream of being a pro wrestler? And if so, what was the motivation to sticking to it? No, I never thought about giving up. I was questioning myself, like, um, do I really love it? Do I really, like, want to do it? Because um, to to do something, I need to feel that I love it because that's when I give it my best. I was just questioning, like, how much do I love wrestling? Do I want to do it? But I never thought about, like, oh, giving up because it's hard. Hell no. That motivates me. I, I will never give up on anything. I know like sometimes it will be hard and then it's it's just like life, you know? You're gonna have some sitbacks and then you gotta like step back for a little bit, but then you come back with everything you have. So I will never give up. Hell no, that's not an option. Hell yeah. All right, we've got a question from Ronaldo G. Alfaro on Twitter. You're a blue belt in jujitsu. So you, do you plan on going forward getting purple, brown, or a black belt? And do you keep training? And if so, how often? Yeah, as I train a lot, but like I don't focus just on jujitsu. You know, like that's not um, a thing like to be training just jujitsu. So no, I don't think like I earned. You know, because I gotta feel that I earned what I'm having, and then I'm not changing my belts to like. I have full time to be in jiu-jitsu and I know I'm not going to have it. So, nope, I'm going to stay in blue belt. 
but I'm training MMA too. I'm training like, uh, I keep doing judo, jiu-jitsu and going to MMA now to try to better my strikes because I do want to go do a MMA fight and helps me with my style in wrestling. So yeah, I put everything together. Uh, Resurrect Jupiter on Kubrick wants to know. Wow. I love these handles. Uh, <laughs> so is there something you wish to incorporate from your judo in the future that maybe has not been seen or found a place in wrestling, uh, but you think would be fun to include in your repertoire in wrestling? Um, honestly, I have nothing in mind right now, but yeah, so I stood a lot. That's how I think that's how I get better. I like to watch a lot of videos, matches, judo, jujitsu, pro wrestling, like a lot. Uh, and you know, sometimes it, I see something and then I have an idea, but now I cannot think about like anything special. I just feel like that I'm, co I'm incorporating everything that I was doing judo in pro wrestling now. So it's just like patience and, you know, like different matches, different persons that like different people that I can do stuff with. A uh, question from Seronica Silman on Twitter. Now, this is clearly a hypothetical situation because it's not going to happen. But once Dr. Britt Baker wins the AEW title from Sheeta, again, hey. not going to happen. Sorry, hey. Tony. Um, <laughs> are you ready for a match with Britt, even if it's a no DQ, no stipulation match? Who hell yeah. Bring me everyone. People always ask me, like, what's your dream match? It's always my next one. Bring it. Ooh. Bring it. Yup. Bring me Britt. Give me Sheeta again. We're going to like do better than the first time. I'm pretty sure. And then this time, the outcome is going to be different because, you know, <laughs> I'll be better. So, yeah, of course, I want to wrestle Brit too. And then everybody in the roster. I have, I don't choose one, one people, like one person. Like, I don't care. Just bring me everyone. What happens when, if you wrestle Anna J? Oh, that's going to be hard. <laughs> you know, I was not expecting that. But this way, we are friends, but business is business, man. I'm sorry. When it comes to my dream, it's business. And then we can be friends outside. You know, gotcha. we support each other. It's pretty much like we support each other. We love each other. But then if we got to go against each other, we're going to kill each other and then love each other after this. Uh, James Evans on Twitter wants to know, uh, why do you think you improve so rapidly at AEW compared to your time at the WWE Performance Center? Because I'm happy, 100%. That's, Very good answer. That's the most important thing. It's not that, like, of course, I have, like, uh, a great trainer, like, Dustin's doing, like, a great work with me and I'm grateful for him. Like I have more time to watch matches and, but all of this is happening because I'm happy with myself. I can be who I am without being judged. I can try things. I feel that people trust me. You know, I don't have that pressure on my back every single time. Like, Oh, should I say hi? Oh, should I like walk with my right foot or with my left? Like, I don't have that. So that's why I'm happy. And then I can do better. I feel like every time you're happy, everything is better. You can do your best. Wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Devin on Twitter asks, uh, since Anna Jay has been away for a little bit, have you pushed around Stu Grayson uh, in her place? No, that's Anna's role. I would never take her <laughs> role. I would never take her place. You know, like... We have our own thing, you know, we are great friends, sister, but like we all have our own thing. So that's Anna's job. I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> they have their little like love hate story that uh, I don't wanna be involved, to be honest. <laughs> this is from All Elite Fair on Twitter. Uh, wants to know, uh, Ty, do you talk uh, to Brazilian MMA fighters like Amanda or Chris much for advice given how much of their own training background and regiment is similar to theirs? Uh, no, like I don't talk with Amanda or Chris, like Chris, we kind of follow each other. We change like a couple tweets and stuff, but I, I'm not like friend, friends with them, but yeah, like I love their work. Both of them are great. And you know, and then it's kind of inspiration for me. 
So I appreciate them. Like everybody that works like to represent a country and, you know, do your best. I, I will always appreciate it. Anxious Cowboy on Twitter. Uh, so this is a really interesting situation. I'm actually curious about this, too. So you're you're best friends with Anna J, And now you sort of have the whole Dark Order has your back, even though you're not a member of the Dark Order. So what is that like to have a faction that is that big and has that much history supporting you? Honestly, like they became a family, you know, I'm friends with all the guys like they're amazing. And then I don't know, it's just like I honestly feel that I have a family behind me, like since Anna got injured, unfortunately. And then like I was like, damn, I'm going to be by myself now because she was with me like 24 seven. And then, no, they're like, you know what? We are here for you. Like if you're friends with Anna, we are your friend, you know, like. So I really love them. Like, I really love them. They're so funny. They make me laugh all the time. They give me the support I need, you know, like they make me feel like safe and then like help me in my matches. So I appreciate like all the guys. This is from uh, Dead Eye Rich on Twitter. The biggest question I have for, for Ty Conti is about her sense of humor. What kind of things makes her laugh? Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> I tell you, stupid Damn. questions on Twitter. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I guess. Damn, okay. I don't know. It's, I don't know. Maybe, damn, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I have no idea. I, okay. I, I don't lie. I'm not going to lie. I don't okay. know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> All right. So the next time I see you laugh, I'm going to post on Twitter and say, this is something that made Ty Conti laugh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good one. Just so people know what your sense of humor is. And then so good you one. can learn as well. <laughs> yes. Never thought about it. Sorry, guys. Uh, so you had mentioned this a little bit earlier, but uh, Riv on Twitter says, what's the common opinion of pro wrestling in Brazil? Also, who has the stiffest hitting opponent you have faced? Oh, I would say Sheeta. Yeah. And I would say me, too, because, you know, I hit yes. hard, man. You sure do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I hit hard, you know. And I got lost. What's the question again? <laughs> uh, what's the sort of opinion of pro wrestling in Brazil? Oh, okay. Um, it's hard because, like, it's getting bigger. AW is doing, like, a great job. Like, the platform is, like, helping a lot in brazil because now they it's not live there it's a week later but then now people are like oh damn that's that's pro wrestling you know like they are getting to know pro wrestling and then they support a lot one thing that i um i know and i love about brazil brazilian fans like they're not much but damn it they support you to your freaking last minute right you know like, they're really, really support. Like, they create hashtags. They make my name trending on Twitter. Like, they do it. They are not much, but they're good. They're really good. If, if the Dark Order was a country, it would be Brazil. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're right. Well, Ty, it's a delight talking to you. It's more of a delight seeing you perform in the ring because you've meant a lot to our women's division. And I know we're going to be saying your name a lot over the next couple of years in AEW. Uh, thank you for being with us on our podcast. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I had so much fun. And sorry that I talk a lot sometimes. Stop apologizing. <laughs> and, you know, that was fun. I hope I didn't say anything bad. But no, it you're is all what good, it girl. is. It's all good. <laughs> You're all no, good, and your English is great. Yeah, your English <laughs> is great. I, I'm very surprised that you say you talk a lot because every time I see you backstage, it's always, hi. Yeah. Hi. Like, <laughs> Two, just, I know you. Two, I know no. you better. You know, yeah, right. Aubrey knows that. Just, yeah, just smile and wave. But anyway, <laughs> it's great. And listen, you you're supposed to talk a lot on these because it's about you. It's not about us. So we want to find yeah, out about you. you. So we found that Thank a lot. Thank you. Okay, Thank so, you. Appreciate you guys. Uh, you can uh, follow uh, Ty Conti on Twitter at Ty Conti on Instagram at, at Ty Conti underscore Ty Conti. Uh, you can listen to AEW Unrestricted Podcast for free wherever you get your podcast. Please leave us a rating and review while you're there. New audio episodes drop every Thursday. And you can also check out the video version that's available Monday. Just search AEW Unrestricted on YouTube. That's right. And don't forget AEW Elevation Mondays on YouTube. Dark comes your way 
Tuesdays on YouTube. And then what do we got on Wednesdays, Aubrey? Wednesday, we have AEW Dynamite on TNT, 8 o'clock, 7 central. Definitely watch us. Watch Ty Conte kick some ass. Yeah. And for Aubrey Edwards, I'm Tony Schiavone. Thanks for listening to AEW Unrestricted. Hooray.